welcome to my channel. Today we are talking about homework. I'm a high school math teacher and this is my seventh year teaching. I have always assigned homework and at the beginning I kind of based it off of what I did as a student teacher and how my teachers taught when I was a student. This year I've made a big change and I wanted to share what I was doing before, what I'm doing now, and basically kind of compare the two and talk about any like troubleshooting for what I'm doing now. It seems like homework is one of those things that teachers like to hear from other teachers about. So I just wanted to share what I do in the hopes that it helps other teachers. So this topic, just like any other, it's a very important that when you hear what other people are doing, you just take that time to reflect on what is going to be best for your students at your school. Because what's best for my students in my school might not be what's best for your students. And that's okay. So first of all, I would like to address the fact that there are teachers that have completely stopped giving homework altogether, and there is research out there to support that decision. In my school, teachers were being given mixed messages. Initially, we were being told that we should not be assigning homework and that it was widening the achievement gap between students of low and high socioeconomic statuses. And I totally get it. We have students that are living in poverty, a very high percentage. And and it's hard for them to do homework because they might not have the structure set up where they're able to do that at home for just so many different reasons, whether they're taking care of siblings or they just don't have the help that they need or just the resources or the access. However, we were also being told that our students that went on to college from our high school were not ready. And a big part of that was that they didn't know how to handle having homework or work for class outside of class. So taking all of this into account, I still choose to give my students homework because I feel like they need to learn that responsibility and time management for the rest of their life. Now in my school, my students, not all, but most of them, have study halls built into their schedule and that is the perfect time for them to do homework. In fact, we were also being told at one point that we should be assigning homework so that when they got to study hall, they would have something to do. And I mean, we have students that have up to three study halls in their schedule. So we do have a few students that have no study hall whatsoever. We have some that have study hall every other day and then we have students with three study halls every day. It's, it's kind of hard to balance it all. So when I assign homework, I always try to make sure that it was a short, simple assignment that they could do on their own. And I always did put in a little bit of a challenge, but I always was trying to make sure that it was something that they would not be spending too much time on. So whenever I did have students come in and say, you know, I spent so much time on this homework, like you should be proud of me. I said, well, I'm happy that you're taking your school studies seriously, but if it's taking you more than 20 minutes, I want you to stop because it means that you need help, which means that we should be talking together to get you the help that you need so that your homework doesn't take too long. So what I used to do, and I did this for my first two years, was I assigned homework every single night. And I wasn't this way for all of my classes because I have geometry regions that I've taught for the past six years, now my seventh year. And then I have other classes that students are in to get math credit, not to take the regents exam, not to get an advanced diploma. So those classes I'm kind of excluding from this discussion. They're getting homework like twice a week. So I'm not really considering them too much in this conversation, um, but their assignments are short and they usually have time to start it or even complete it in class. So with that aside, talking about my Regents classes, for my Regents Geometry, I was giving them homework every single night. And I honestly was going out of my way to make sure that they had homework every single night. If they took a test during the day, they still had homework that night. And again, I did everything I could to keep it short. So typically my homeworks were about four questions maybe five if there were easier questions in there. Now, if they had like simple like vocabulary matching type homework, it was like 10 questions because it was matching. Or if they were like analyzing a diagram, it could have been like 10 questions. But when it's like, you need to apply this thing that we did in class, four questions. So I was honestly like killing myself to assign them homework every single night and it was ridiculous. I do not recommend that for anybody. My third through my sixth year, I eased up and I eased up more and more over time and I would have homework most nights instead of every night. 
and if we did a topic that did not warrant homework or if I did a lesson that I really had spread out over two class days, I wouldn't give homework in between. I would kind of wait for us to finish the topic and then give the homework that second day. So I became a lot more flexible and I wasn't driving myself crazy trying to have homework all the time. If I wasn't able to put a homework assignment together for any reason, I just got over and said, okay, whatever. They probably need a break anyways. So that was a big improvement. I went on that way and I would assign homework and then the next day in class, I would walk up and down the rows or around the tables, depending on how my classroom was set up and take the clipboard and just mark off whether or not they did their homework. I graded on a four point scale, so it was four points, it was completely done. And I was only grading on completion. So if they had half of it done, they got two points, they had nothing, they got zero, you get the idea. Typically what I would do, because I wasn't checking for accuracy when I was checking for completion, was I would pick out one or two problems to look specifically for and kind of just do a quick assessment by looking at their homework to see whether or not they got it. If everyone had the same answer for number three and it was the correct answer, we were good. If people couldn't even get through number three or so many people had the wrong answer, that meant we were gonna go over it. So after checking the homework in class, we would go over the do now that students were working on while I was checking the homework, and then we would go over the homework. So I would have the answers on the left side of the board, and then on the right side, I would have the, because it's geometry and there's diagrams, I would have the problem that I would drag onto the screen in case we were going over that problem. I also wanted to mention what I did for late homework. So if students did not bring in their homework, they had either one full week or up until we took the unit test to make up their homework for half credit. Because my philosophy is that I'd rather have them do the practice, even if it's late. I feel like I have so much information to get out that I'm talking so fast, so I apologize. I'm trying to slow down. I'm also getting like a post nasal drip thing happening. So the homework ended up taking like 10 minutes of my class time every single day, and it was annoying and frustrating. So that's actually what prompted me to change how I do homework. So over the summer on Instagram, To The Square Inch shared what she does for homework and this is what prompted me to make a change because people had been recommending this to me for a while and I was resistant to it. Like, no, this doesn't make sense. I cannot, I cannot wrap my head around making this work. But she shared how she assigns one homework assignment for the entire week. I believe the stories that she shared are still up in her highlights. But when she got to the point where she said, so I don't have to go over homework every day. My mind was blown. I realized instantly that can save me 10 minutes of class time each day. Students will get more time to practice in class. They'll be able to be more successful on their homework. So that just had me right there. And I said, okay, I need to try this. So if you are a middle school teacher, she actually has her homework up for sale on Teachers Pay Teachers, I believe. If I find it, I will link it. If it's not linked, that means I made this part up. I'm sorry. So she basically has one worksheet and she has it broken down by day and I think she goes Monday through Friday and she has 20 questions. So Monday through Friday they're getting four questions, which is basically what I was doing anyway. So what I do is I pass out the homework every Friday. The homework starts on Friday. So I have a row for Friday, a row for Monday, all the way down to Thursday. So it does delineate like they have homework every night, but it's up to them when they complete it. I pass it out on Friday, so they have the option of whether or not they do it over the weekend. If they have a busy weekend, they don't have to worry about their homework that's due on Monday, because it's not due again until the next Friday. So now that I'm not checking homework during class every day, I collect the homework on Fridays, and now I can grade for accuracy, which gives me a much better picture of what students understand and where they need help. So the homework is graded out of 20 points, and it's mostly like you got it right or you got it wrong, but I will a lot partial credit for, okay, you started this correctly or you had this one tiny mistake. It really just depends on the problem. So with 20 questions, I learned really quickly that that was way too much for me to have to grade. So I started combining them and I would combine my blocks within the rows. So on Friday, maybe there's two questions, but there are more work. And so it's a two point question instead of four, one point questions. I hope that makes sense. I really wanted to have an example to show, but I'm on winter break and I don't have anything like that with me and 
I don't really have the time or patience to print it out just to show it in a video. So if you want to see an example, I'll get something posted, I guess. I print the homework out single-sided. I don't concern myself with students having enough space, really, because if they need more space, they put it on the back or they do it on a separate sheet of paper. It makes grading a little bit trickier, but not by much, and I really don't mind. So when people recommended this to me in the past, my biggest objection was that, you know, sometimes things change. I have my week planned out in advance, so I know what I'm teaching when, but we have snow days or fire drills or things that prevent us from getting through a lesson entirely. And how am I going to make a homework that's so far in advance? So what I've done is I incorporate spiral review questions into the homework, which is something that I've always wanted to do, but have struggled with actually incorporating it into my homeworks until now. So if I take a week, whatever I did from Thursday the previous week to Wednesday of the current week, that's what can be on the homework. So that keeps it so that the questions appearing on the homework are questions that students have encountered before and are practicing. So there's nothing on there that they haven't seen before. So what I want to change going forward is on Mondays I'm passing back the homework and going over the answers. So I'm going to make it so that Monday I collect any homework from students that were absent or any student that is turning it in late. Then I'll go over the homework and everything and after I go over the homework I will not be accepting that homework late anymore. So they basically have the extra two days of the weekend to finish any homework that they were unable to complete for Friday for whatever reason. They get their two passes for the year, but after that Monday, I will not be taking it again. So I'm going to start that when we return from break because that was not something that I was doing yet. And that was a piece that's missing. The only other downside to grading homework like this is that students are inclined to copy or cheat. And there's not a whole lot that we could ever really do about it. So in general, if students have copied homework, which I'm now able to monitor much more closely because I'm collecting the homework, both of those students get a zero. So that's the policy. But in order for me to be able to act on it, it needs to be very obvious that the homework was copied. I am not the, going to be the copy police on homework. The other thing is, and I know there's like a Dan Meyer blog post about this, Homework should never be more than 10% of a student's overall grade. And this is part of the reason why it's not work that you can monitor to know for 100% certain that this is their work. I'm actually interested in lowering my homework grade to 5% of their overall average, but I feel like if I did that, students would be even less inclined to do it. So with it being only 10% of their grade, it's really not worth my stress of trying to figure out whether or not they copied every single time and all of that. Plus. I really have no problem with students working together on their homework. It's just straight up copying that's really annoying. And they know that it doesn't help them. They just do it anyway. So they're going to have to learn a lesson and they'll learn it in their life. It does not have to be something that I teach them. That's just how I look at it. So I'm sure some people disagree and that's fine. We all have our different ways of looking at things. So the one result that I've gotten with this new way of doing homework that I absolutely love is... I've had students kind of talking about everything that they have going on and how they're kind of stressed out about it. And they're like, well, tomorrow I have this test and this quiz and these classes, this homework's due, oh, and our math homework is due. And then they said, but I've had all week to do that. I just chose not to. So they understand or they're starting to learn now that when they procrastinate their homework, they're bringing it on themselves and they're making it so that it's a lot of work. I also really love the flexibility of letting students choose when they're doing their homework throughout the week. Students have busy lives and a lot of them are very involved in sports and clubs and we just recently had our band and chorus concert and those things take a lot of time from students, especially if they have to travel back and forth to school to participate in these events. So just giving them that freedom and flexibility to choose when to do the homework and to let them say, you know what, I need this night off from homework. I can make it up tomorrow. I feel like it's just been very, very helpful and beneficial. And my hope is that students learn how to manage their time so that when they're in college, they're able to manage their time there. Because I know for me, it was a tough transition for my first semester of my freshman year when I just had all this free time and I did not know what to do with it. I took a lot of naps though. 
So I think I got everything out that I wanted to say on the topic of homework, but there is still so much more to say about it. So please leave a comment if you have any questions that you would like for me to address or just to share what you do with your kids and your classes because like I said, this is one of those topics where the more we hear different ideas, the better that we're able to consider and evaluate what's going to work best for our students. And ultimately, I just feel like it's gonna help other people. And as always, thank you for watching.